How's everyone doing? I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. Welcome to the match preview of our upcoming game against Man United in the FA Cup. You guys know how I do my match previews. I start off by giving my thoughts and opinions on the press conference. Then I give you guys my predicted lineup for the game. Then I end the video by talking about the tactics and I discuss how we can beat our opponents. But you guys, if you enjoyed today's video, smash that like button. Help me get more than 500 likes for today's video. And don't forget to press the bell notification button as well to stay tuned to all things Blue Line CV. But before I get into anything, I want to say a shout out and a happy birthday to Wale Williams. I want to say, man, you've got a very, very, very good girlfriend. You're a lucky guy. He actually emailed me, asked me if I can give you a birthday shout out. I want to say apologies for not releasing it on the day. Unfortunately, I couldn't really release a video due to my schedule, but I'm hoping this is okay. Thanks again, and I hope that you had a very good day. Starting with the press conference, and this time Zola was speaking instead. And really the main talking points from the press conference were in regards to Ruben being available for the game against Man United. And of course, Callum Hudson-Odoi. Now, in the previous video I've released, I did go into more depth with this, but for people that haven't seen it, I'm going to give some brief thoughts and opinions on that. And honestly, it's very disappointing. As, as I was tweeting earlier, it's kind of like, come on now, like we're not stupid, the fan base ain't dumb, you know. Hudson Nadoy has barely played. I mean, since comments that sorry made in regards to Callum being up there with William and Pedro, he hasn't started a single Premier League game. And even the last game against Malmo, well, pitiful min uh, minutes against them, it's not good enough. And it's really frustrating. And as I was saying, I always just had a feeling from the start. Yes, I knew I was cynical, but I knew that we were only giving him opportunities to really just, you know, uh, make sure that he doesn't sign for Bayern Munich. That was the main thing. Since then, he's barely played. It doesn't make any sense because William and Pedro haven't got any better. And it's the most frustrating indictment on Sarri so far, in my opinion. Um, of course, I do think that he's getting a bit too much blame in regards to youth getting an opportunity. Conte and Mourinho are worse, in my opinion. But I think now the fan base have realised, you know, we've got a talent in hudson Adore who's so good that it actually doesn't make any sense now that he isn't playing. When, they, when his competition in front of him aren't performing and aren't that good anymore. So it is quite frustrating from that point of view. And I don't know, it's, it just shows you how sorry and Zola are seeing Callum hudson Adore, And it's no wonder why so many talented young players with this club get so frustrated and don't believe in playing for us in the end. When he made the point that there aren't many 18 year olds playing uh, as many minutes in world football. I was just like, oh, come on, Zola. We're not stupid. First of all, Hudson Adoy isn't any 18 year old. He's one of the best in Europe, in my opinion. And it seems like quite a weak excuse as well to mention the fact that other people his age aren't playing as much. Yes, we understand that in modern football today, it's harder for these young players to get opportunities playing at a high level of football. But when this composition ahead of them isn't as good or consistent, it does make you wonder why aren't the coaches just trusting him with that opportunity to start a game? Hudson Adoy is up there with guys like Sancho, for example, Havertz from Bayer Leverkusen. Even Foden is playing more games than him, getting more minutes because you know he's actually starting them and finishing them. And cast your minds back to when England beat Brazil in the final of the Under-17 World Cup. That was a Brazil team that had Emerson, that's at Barcelona now. You know, it had Vinicius as well. That England team dominated them. Hudson Adoy caused so many issues for Brazil. Now, when you compare the fates of all the players that played in that game and participated, Hudson Adoy isn't anywhere near close to playing. And he's up there, he's on the same level as these guys. So it's no surprise why you are going to be frustrated at the lack of opportunity. And I think that, you know, if you want to speak to the player through the coaches, I don't think you're doing a very good job. Now, moving on to the predicted lineup part for today's video. As you guys can see beside me, I'm going for Hudson Adoy, Higuain, and Hazard up front. I'm thinking that if there's a game to actually use this front three, it has to be the game against Man United. Personally, sorry, please. I can't understand why you'd use either Willian or Pedro, who haven't been great. Pedro did nothing inspiring in the game against Malmo either. Hudson Adoy needs to start. Now, in midfield, I'm going for an ambitious lineup. I'm going for Ruben as the number eight with Kante and Jorginho. I think that, you know, Ruben's been spoken about quite a lot. I'm sure that Sari now wants to start using him. As I've always said, the reason as to why Sari has been very reluctant 
to use Ruben is the fact that he's in a very delicate situation with his back. As I keep telling you guys all the time, you know, his back situation is so delicate that he has his own separate training regimes to help try and combat against his bad back. I feel like Ruben is that player that can really help bring Sari's philosophy on the game to life because he's exactly what we need for a number eight. You know, he's comfortable getting inside the box. He can play people in. He can find the pass. He doesn't lose the ball in the final third. His turn of pace, shots and goal. Oh, I wish this guy could get a consistent season. I think that's all he needs to show that he's one of the better or maybe one of the best midfield players in the league. Yes, I know that I'm sounding pretty crazy right now, but he just needs that opportunity of a season to really show what he's about. Now in defence, I was thinking about this for a while. Listen, I'm, I've gone for Emerson in the lineup, but I think that Sari is going to be using Alonso for some baffling reason. I'm thinking now, Sari, there is no excuse to use Alonso. I thought Emerson was solid against Malmo. Let him build from that. Give these guys momentum. I don't think it's fair. That was the main issue I had in my previous video when I was talking about hudson Adoy. Sari doesn't give guys like this any momentum. A run of games to really show what they're about. I mean, it's not fair to play well one game and then you're not playing the next game or you get 10 minutes afterwards. It's like, how can you build from that? How can you show that you're ready? Sorry, he needs to stop doing that in my opinion. But beside Emerson, I've gone for Luis, Rudiger and I've gone for Aspi as well. Now, ideally, I would like to see Christensen over Rudiger, but I think that, you know, Sari using Christensen against Malmo really signified to us that Rudiger will be starting in that game. And obviously, it's going to be Kepa and goal. Now, moving on to the tactics talks for today's video, starting with Man United and the biggest news and the news that gives us the biggest advantage for the game tomorrow night is the fact that Marshall and Lingard won't be playing. And when you're seeing what Solskjaer has brought to Man United now, missing out on these two players is crucial because you have Solskjaer now, He's brought back that width at Man United, you know. He's brought back that freedom to express yourself as well. But the width is the most important thing, you know. United look much more threatening down the flanks now. They never used to have that. They're able to create 1v1 opportunities for their wingers as well. Martial's really showing what he's about. And honestly, you know, Solskjaer's doing all the things that we kind of knew these United players could do already. But of course, but one of the main things that he has brought back due to personnel changes and using players correctly, is like Man United's counter-attacking style is vastly improved under Solskjaer compared to Mourinho. Now, of course, we've got guys like Lingard making movement off the ball, creating space. When you've got Rashford playing up front, you know, Rashford is much better playing up front. He's always been a striker. He's, he was never a winger. So in a way, Mourinho kind of stagnated him for no particular reason. But, you know, he's really profiting from this sense of space as well. And this is why he's scoring so frequently. And it's the same thing for Martial as well. But even though Solskjaer is giving more freedom and license, to the attacking players by allowing guys like Pogba to play his natural role and push forward to help support the attacks as well as using a lot of fast balls down the flanks to really help really quicken their play down the flanks. United are looking good but they do look susceptible on the counter attack so far in the good form they haven't really been affected by that but the game against Paris and Germain really showed United's limitations and that yes if you do have a good game plan against them you can really limit them and get something favorable from the game now the big thing that Paris Saint-Germain did to win the game was to really overload down Man United's left hand side why is that well that's where they have all their best players you know Luke Shaw Marshall and Pogba it's a very potent left hand side and Paris Saint-Germain made sure that they had a lot of players there to really out Man United in those areas you know Pogba was a bit isolated, Martial was isolated, there was no connections and, and Man United's attack really forward because of that. Now, with the addition of Lingard obviously coming off in that game as well, United were forced to have to play balls down the right hand side but without that pace and quickness there, you know, he had to use Matter instead. Matter isn't that type of player to play like that and United's attacks really struggled and it was very easy and comfortable for Paris and Germain in the end. As I keep stressing, the fact that Martial and Lingard are gone means that there's no pace on the side. Now, could Solskjaer use Rashford out wide on the left? I think most likely he's going to do that, even though it might not be the best thing. But this is where we can profit from Man United. Paris and Germain gave us the blueprint, and I think that you know, we know how sorry ball works. You know, the left hand side is the most important side. If we've got Emerson, potentially, Ruben, and Hazard, we could really dominate down that side and keep our game 
you know, take the game to Man United and really force them in their own half. And without that pace to worry about necessarily on the counter attack, that's really going to help our possession game profit even more. Potential replacements in players like Sanchez and Mata, yeah, good quality technical players, but they don't suit this new style of football that's happening at Man United that requires a lot of pace a lot of agility and a lot of directness as well. So it is gonna make this game pretty interesting, you know. What is Solskjaer gonna to do to try and combat this? They're gonna use this counter attacking style to keep that balance, keep their shape, and hopefully find the right moments in which they can potentially profit from a counter attack. Still, when it does come to our chances on the game on Monday, I am feeling optimistic, I can't lie. I do feel like we can get something from this game. I think that we are playing Man United at the exact right time. The players' confidence might be a bit shaky after that, you know, comprehensive defeat to Paris and Germain, missing out on key players for their football as well. It's not going to inspire too much confidence, and I feel like, obviously, you know, if we profit from this 2 1 win over Malmo, if Sari uses the right players, which I think that, you know, the wrong selection a lot of times really bottlenecks the team and the system, if he finally uses the right players tomorrow, then I think that we can beat Man United, and I think that. A lot of this talk of pressure on sorry might subside a bit and it's going to kind of dissipate. But anyway, you guys, that's going to bring an end for today's video. Please like, comment and subscribe. As I keep saying, if you want to help support me on Patreon, do that. Get access to exclusive videos. I'm going to keep it moving. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. Signing out.